Today we're going to have a look at Plog here. So Plog is a little logic module. You've got your logic operations side and your flip-flop toggling side on the right. You've got two channels that you can work with, and you select the channel using the out button, and then you select a logic operation using the type button. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to start by connecting Shapeshifter to output A, Digitank. Digitank to my main output. And so now, if I take a square wave LFO from the Dixie, so things get more interesting when we connect a second input. And now what happens is, with us set to AND, it's waiting for both the X and Y inputs to have the high stage of that LFO. So with a regular signal from a clock, we can tie that to a tempo. And of course the different logic operations will have different rhythms. And you'll notice B is also firing, and that's because the X and Y inputs on A are normal to B's inputs. Of course, the logic types can be modulated with CV to create different rhythms or textures, and the attenuators can set the range of that modulation. On the right, we have the flip-flop or toggle section with out T and out D. Out T flips between high and low states, either when it receives a gate at the toggle input, or the red button is pressed. Out B is normal to the toggle input, but you can sever this connection by moving the jumper on the back. If the red button is held down for a second, it becomes a tap clock. Tap clock mode disables the toggle input, and you can just hold down the button to exit. We can manually toggle it using the red button, uh, if I go into tap mode, so we can use that to, to easily generate pulses. If we take a square wave LFO, out T feeds the clock input of out D, which is basically a binary sample and hold, meaning that it reads or samples the data input when it receives a clock input and outputs the result. Signals above 3 volts are considered high, so you can use non-square waveforms. If nothing is plugged into the data input, it's fed the inverse of out D. This makes sure that it can be used as a toggle. So now when it receives a clock, if the output of the LFO is high, it's going to trigger plonk. So this is a really easy way to get some more variation into a regular rhythm. And you can make this even more complex by getting the logic operations involved. These two toggles can function as clock dividers, with out T dividing by 2 and out D dividing by 4. And because they work at audio rate, they can be used as octave dividers. Got that square wave on channel 1 of Mutamix. And then we can take a version divided by 2 and a version divided by 4. If we have that sequenced by Metropolis, And 
because these are just outputting high or low outputs, they're always going to output square waves, but you can input different wave shapes. So now if I add some pulse width modulation to that pulse wave... So you get some interesting kind of chiptune artifacts when you're sweeping the pulse width. One great use for Plog is to regularly transpose a sequence from Metropolis. If we take the sync out from Metropolis to the toggle input, and then take either the out T or out D to an aux input, we can offset a parameter every two or four loops of the sequence. This is great for transposing a melody using either the pre-quantized pitch or root, and you can use the aux attenuators to set the amount of transposition. You can also use this to add ratcheting, or change the step division settings, or whatever else you want to try. Here's some other ways that Plog can be used. Adding randomization to patterns. Toggling between different oscillators to generate digital tones. If you're new to Boolean logic, Plog may seem a bit intimidating, but understanding the logic types isn't critical. Hopefully this video sheds some light on Plog and its potential. So how do you use Plog in your patches? We'd love to hear your Boolean creations, and thanks for watching.